On May 4th of 1869, the Cincinnati Red Stockings played their first game of the regular season and won over the Great Westerns of Cincinnati. After playing in the American Association for eight years, they were readmitted into the National League. The fans they played for have been passionate about their team, and it showed in 1957 when eight Red starters were voted into the All-Star Game. There's every reason to love the Reds, with players like Johnny Bench, Eric Davis, George Foster, Tony Perez, and many more. The most memorable moments have to be centered around the 1975 and 1976 seasons when the Reds won back-to-back -back World Series. In 1975, the Reds opposed Carlton Fisk and the Boston Red Sox. They fought to Game 7, finally pulling off the victory in a 4-3 win. In 1976, they did the same, winning the championship, but something interesting happened. They swept the Yankees. Johnny Bench was a big part of 1976, hitting for a 533 batting average and slugging 1133 in the postseason. Cincinnati is currently building a contender, signing multiple players that will hopefully help to bring them to another World Series victory once again. So the Cincinnati Reds are a team that's very interesting. They had a good starting rotation to start off, uh, maybe even a little bit above average at uh, the least, and they went out and they got Wade Miley. Uh, they added to their outfield. Uh, they did a bunch of stuff. They even added to their infield. It was almost like an entire roster overhaul. overhaul. I did that. Uh, seems so hard to say. But um, the Cincinnati Reds, nevertheless, are a team that has uh, an expectation this season, and it's to compete and to win. And so that's the kind of standard I'm going to hold Cincinnati to. Uh, they have to win. And that's just it. They have a really good ball team now. They have a mixture of younger guys and veteran talent. So uh, hopefully they can get the job done. Starting off the discussion, I wanted to talk about the rotation. Moreover, I wanted to talk about a guy who has really good stuff and focuses a lot on the analytical and biomechanical points of baseball. His name is Trevor Bauer. So Trevor Bauer had a very up and down 2019. I believe he had a better uh, season with Cleveland, but nevertheless, Overall, posted a 4.48 ERA with 253 strikeouts, a 1.25 whip over 213 innings pitched. And so, as you can see, a lot of strikeouts. Definitely a lot of strikeouts, so you know he has good stuff. But uh, what was the reason for his downfall? Was it the 2019 baseball? And that was something that I wanted to discuss because uh, Trevor Bauer is a guy who really looks into a lot of the different aspects of baseball and tries to see what works and what doesn't. So uh, I, I guess Trevor can only have the reason for that one. I guess you can attribute it to the 2019 baseball, but he still had a lot of strikeouts. I, I guess the 2019 baseball could be one of the reasons that uh, all of this happened to Trevor Bauer, unfortunately. But hopefully the 2020 ball is different and maybe we see different results. But I think Trevor Bauer did a lot this offseason to try and uh, hone in on uh, bettering his craft. So hopefully we can see that. Um, and on to the next bullet point here. We have in-depth analytical and biomechanical approach. And that's what Trevor Bauer really does focus on. Uh, he's really big on biomechanics and being able to efficiently uh, transfer energy throughout his delivery to be able to maximize velocity and be able to uh, get the most out of his pitches. Uh, he looks at analytics to be able to uh, study you know, stats and uh, different numbers to be able to know uh, what pitches work well, uh, what gives you the best outcome. And so Trevor Bauer definitely focuses on that. And he is a good baseball mind. He is very smart and he, he does a lot good, uh, not only for the players on the team and for the game, but uh, for Major League Baseball overall, I, I believe the commercialization for the sport because he's uh, trying to put in his input on uh, what Major League Baseball should do in terms of uh, being able to, uh, you know, hopefully get rid of blackouts and stuff like that. So uh, Trevor Bauer definitely has a lot to say. And um, if you want to go check out Trevor Bauer, he also has a YouTube channel at Trevor Bauer, and uh, I believe he's featured on Momentum as well. So uh, that's pretty cool to hear that he has a YouTube. He's very transparent with his ideas. But um, Trevor Bauer also allowed a season-high 34 home runs, 
which is nine more than his previous high, which was set in 2017. So uh, that brings me back to the point of the 2019 baseball. Maybe that is really the reason that Trevor Bauer was really having these struggles. But nevertheless, moving on to the question for Trevor Bauer today, will Bauer ever be able to perform like he did in 2018? So Trevor Bauer is still, uh, you know, he's relatively young. He's pretty much in the prime of his career right now. And I, I think he's got a really good opportunity to bounce back with the Reds. You have different pitchers on the staff that can really, uh, you know, bounce their knowledge off of Trevor. And, you know, I like I said, I feel like Trevor trained hard this offseason to try and fix uh, whatever was going on. But I do feel like the 2019 baseball had a lot to do with it, especially with other pitchers as well. You know, so hopefully uh, the ball is different. Hopefully Trevor's able to have, find success because I believe that he has the talent and the skill set to do so. And he has the knowledge uh, to back uh, all of his uh, skills up and to make them better. So uh, I definitely see Trevor having a better season and hopefully one that is similar to 2018 at the least. And on to the next player. We have a guy who plays the outfield. He split time between the Detroit Tigers and the Chicago Cubs last year and really did tear it up uh, when he went to the Sh Chicago Cubs. So uh, let's talk about Nicholas Castellanos. So like I mentioned, he split 2019 with Detroit and Chicago, but had a really good 2019 overall. He's always been known uh, for his bat. And so he split 289, 337, 525 with 27 home runs and 73 RBIs. And as most of you may know, his defense isn't exactly a strength. Yes, he's, he can catch a ball uh, out there. His arm isn't the best. And, uh, well, I wouldn't really rely on him when it comes to trying to make tough catches with low probabilities of catching the ball or trying to dive too much for a ball. But uh, Nicholas is still only 28 years old. He's still really young yet. And uh, he's pretty much come into his own, showing people that he can maintain high offensive production and it shows in the numbers and on the field. So uh, Nick is one of those guys that can really get it done, and I think that he'll only bolster the offense of the Cincinnati Reds. But the question today uh, for Nicholas Castellanos is, with the overhauled Cincinnati offense, can he have a 30 home run, 100 RBI season in a full 162 uh, games? So Castellanos usually hits around 25 to 27 home runs a year. And I, I don't exactly know if he's hit 100 RBIs in his career yet. I don't believe he did, but I have to check. Um, Nick is the guy uh, in that lineup that's probably going to hit uh, third or fifth, if I could uh, kind of formulate anything or think about it. Uh, we'll see where he bats, but uh, it would be a good place for him. I think that uh, Nick definitely has the uh, bat to be able to drive in runs and be able to hit for the gap. So uh, we'll see what happens. He's a really good hitter, and I do believe that he can hit 30 home runs and drive in 100 or more RBIs. I just think that that uh, Cincinnati overhauled offense and more of the overhauled team in general is really going to perform well, and we're, we're going to see something different in Cincinnati. I think that the offense with the additions of Mike Moustakis and uh, Shogo Akiyama and a bunch of other guys is really, really going to help them. So uh, we'll see how the offense is. And you also have younger guys that are also a year older as well. And coming in third on our list, we have a third baseman that hits for a lot of power, creates some fireworks with the bat. His name is Eugenio Suarez. So Suarez had a monster power season in 2019, slashing 271, 358, 572, with 49 home runs and 103 RBI. So as we can see through the numbers, definitely had a really good power season and wasn't too bad uh, contact wise, hitting 271. But nevertheless, moving on to his defense, he is a solid defender. He isn't really gonna cost you over there at defense. So knowing that he can supplement that uh, really quality offense with the defense, it's really good. You know, it makes him a really good all around player. and. Can Suarez really run? Uh, I don't think he's the best runner, but uh, nevertheless a good defender and really good on offense. But uh, the main concern that I see is the 189 strikeouts that he had in 2019, which is 34 more than his previous set career high. But is it really a concern? You have Suarez that's a power hitter, and you're probably going to see numbers like this uh, come from a guy that hit for power, especially with 49 home runs being put on the board last season. 
So I could see anywhere between 150 and 180 uh, strikeouts in a season. 189, I think that's going to be his career high, but we'll see. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether the strikeout numbers keep climbing or whether they stay around uh, where they are now. So, uh, yeah, I think the numbers will fluctuate a little bit. But nevertheless, Suarez is a really quality player who is 28 years of age. And he still has a good chunk of his career to go. And I believe that uh, he might be a Hall of Famer by the time it's all said and done. But the question today for Suarez is, is he the best overall position player on the Reds? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I believe that Eugenio Suarez is one of uh, the best position players, if not the best, because uh, you look at the bat, he has a tremendous bat, and like I said, you look at the defense, solid defense, he doesn't really cost you over there, and uh, he's a guy that goes up there uh, looking to mash every time he goes up to the plate, so uh, you like to see that, and he knocks the ball a long way. He's a real fireworks show when he's up there at the plate, and I think he's just one of the most exciting players to watch on that team. We're going to see a lot more exciting players flood uh, onto the scene with Castellanos, Sakiyama, Moussakis, and a bunch of others. So it's definitely going to be exciting to see, but I do think that Suarez takes the crown for the best overall position player. And last but not least, we have a guy that came over from Japan and is going to play the outfield for the Reds. Hopefully he can translate his numbers over here into American baseball and uh, hopefully do well for the Reds. His name is Shogo Akiyama. So Shogo was signed by the Reds and previously played for the Saitama Cebu Lions. Anyone can correct me on that if I pronounce anything wrong, but uh, nevertheless, in 2019 with the Lions, he slashed 303, 392, 471 with 20 home runs and 62 RBI. So you can see from that that he definitely had a good offensive season. Of course, uh, a lot of players tend to do better in Japan, but uh, maybe the numbers can translate. I mean, look at Otani. He's still asserting his dominance, uh, whether it's on the mound or at the plate. So uh, you definitely have good players that you can get from Japan, but uh, he's not a liability on defense from what I know. I believe he's pretty athletic even at age 32, so uh, maybe we could see a good Shogo Akiyama out there who can uh, run the field and be able to make those catches uh, that they need him to make. But I think the big question is, can he live up to the hype? And so Shogo is a guy that displayed a lot of talent over in Japan. But I think the real question is, can he bring it over here and be able to actually uh, perform well over here? I think that he can. And Shogo is a guy that is a little bit older. That's understandable that you might find risk in that. But uh, Japanese hitters, I believe, age well. I mean, you look at Ichiro Suzuki. He's a guy that really aged well. And you have a bunch of other guys that age well too. So uh, hopefully he can do the same. And so do I think that Shogo Akiyama will indeed live up to the hype? Yes, I do. Uh, he might be 32 years old, but he's athletic. He has that athleticism to back it up. And I believe he will age well. Most guys from Japan uh, do age pretty well. I mean, you could look back at Ichiro. He played uh, for quite a long time and you have others as well. So uh, definitely going to be interesting to see him with the Reds uh, perform and hopefully succeed. But if you guys like this sort of content, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos coming out like this. And if you have a certain team that you would like to suggest, then leave it in the comments below or uh, head over to my Instagram link in the description. And uh, yeah, you can meet me over there and comment on one of my latest posts or leave a direct message and I will get back to you as soon as possible about uh, the team and uh, maybe whether or not I'm doing them next. So uh, thank you all for watching. This has been Major League Talk with your Cincinnati Reds. Two down, nobody on. Joe Morgan's bloop single right now is the difference. Top of the ninth inning, he put the Reds ahead. It's a high fly ball. It should be all over. Geronimo's under it. And Cincinnati has won the world championship, beating the Boston Red Sox 4-3.